Bootstrappers, this is Ryan Nickel with another day in the life of Bootstrap Real Estate Investing and coming at you with episode number 69. Um, no jokes about that at all, so we'll just go ahead and keep it clean. So, um, scarcity. Scarcity is something that I have dealt with on and on throughout my life. And I believe that a lot of you deal with it as well. If you don't, then you're lying to yourself and you're lying to everybody else around you because scarcity is a reality. It's what motivates us. It's what also paralyzes us from taking action. So what is the scarcity that I'm currently dealing with right now? Well, the scarcity that I'm dealing with is in, um, it's in my own marketplace. I have this, this battle between wanting to help people and just wanting to just go out and crush it on my own. And so what does it look like when I help people? Well, I, ha I have a meetup that I have. And I give information freely. I don't charge for it. And I work with people. Uh, I take people on. I mentor them. And I do it with the hope that we are going to be able to do some business together. That by me giving up my time and my resources and my talents and my time and my energy to them, that they would in, in turn reciprocate and say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and partner on some deals. Well, what I have found happens not all the time, but in, in some cases, is I will go ahead and take someone under my wing and, and share them you know, with them what they need to do, have them come with me as I drive for dollars, um, do some three-way phone calls with them, help them get you know, a deal under contract, and then with the, with the expectation and anticipation that they would then partner that, that deal with me. Well, that's not always the case. There are some times where they will go over here and go partner with somebody else. And when that happens, it makes me want to work on this side of the fence, that I just want to just go ahead and close up and say, screw you all. I don't need to be helping you all because I'm only creating competition for myself in my own local market, uh, especially when I teach exactly what's working and what I'm doing. And so it's this battle that I have going back and forth. Do I want to help people um, and, and or do I charge them so that I can justify helping them if they're not going to partner with me? Because... It really pisses me off when I will have someone say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I should have brought this deal to you, but I didn't. Hey, what's up, Bobby? Uh, I decided to go somewhere else. You know, this other guy was going to pay me a little bit more money. Well, how did you get that deal in the first place? Who was it, who was it that, that showed you what to do? Who was it that held your hand? And so that, you know, that, that shit just pisses me off when, I, when, that, when, that, when that shit happens. And so, you know, whenever that happens, I told my wife multiple, multiple times, I'm like, you know what, I am just ready to shut down my, um, my meetup. I'm done. I'm tired. And every time I come back, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do it. And she's like, why? Like, for example, last month um, at my meetup, I had this lady, she's like, you know what, I partnered with Ryan. He put $15,000 into my pocket, and I love working with him. If you're not working with him, he's the best person you should be working with. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I should keep, keep on doing this. Because, I mean, I made some money on that as well. It was a great, great opportunity for both of us to come together. But then I get a phone call from this guy. He's like, hey, sorry, man. Probably should have sent, sent this deal to you, but hey, it is what it is. It didn't work out that way. I'm like, great. Well, how about the next one? You know, I understand that sometimes it just doesn't work out. Totally cool. Totally fine. I understand that. So then he calls me on the next one. He's like, hey, how about this deal? He's like, but it's like, it's not, hey, hey, Ryan, let's partner on this deal. It's like, hey, Ryan, what would you do in this situation? Who are you going to, who are you going to, you know, how are you going to approach the situation with this guy? And I'll tell him, he's like, oh, great. That's what I'll do. Great. I'm like, well, how about we partner on it? Nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm like, dude, fuck you. What the hell? Why, why did I just give you my, you know, exactly my strategy, what to do? And then you just cut me right out of it. I mean, part of it's on, you know, shame on me. And, and, and honestly, I don't give up everything that I do. So I've learned with this particular person in general, I'm like, yeah, I got a strategy for that. Get it under contract and we'll go ahead and work on it. Well, how am I going to get it under contract? Figure it out. Once you get the contract, let me know. If you don't want to, I'll get it under contract and I'll just pay you a referral fee. So I've learned that I need to cut these people out that are like that. But still, it's the scarcity. It's like, do I want to continue mentoring these people? And I say these people loosely because... Yeah, some of them do turn into partnerships and we turn into deals. Or do I just want to go out on my own? Just like, you know what? Say, I'm out of here and just go right here and just work my own magic, make my own money. And the people that, that are struggling in my own you know, backyard, to hell with you. And, and this is what, you know, what really triggered me was a was, uh, conversation I had yesterday. This individual was like, hey, um, how do I get started? And I'm like, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going after pre-foreclosures. 
I'm looking for the vacant ones, and I'm talking to the neighbors, and I'm figuring out you know, who I need to call. And I'm thinking, great, I can do this, and it'll shorten my, my time frame. You know, they'll bring me some deals, we'll partner on them, and we'll make some money together. And um, if not, I can just go drive the neighborhoods myself. It's not that hard. I can knock on some doors. I've, that's how I've been picking up my own deals in my own backyard. I'm thinking this is the way that I can go ahead and expand and help somebody in the process and you know, get paid, and they get paid, and then we have a great partnership. So yesterday, we, I did some three-way calls with them, and we found a few, a few deals. Um, and I said, great, you know, she's like, what's my next step? What do I have to do next? Uh, we're actually gonna meet this person on, on Saturday. We're gonna meet one of them at their, at their house. Um, I had a phone call later that afternoon with the other person. Um, so we found out of, the, out of the, we were only able to call three people at that, in, our, in that chunk of time. It took us an hour to get, to get a hold of three people. We called many more than that, but we got a hold of three people. One of them said, nope, absolutely not. Um, the other one said, yeah, I'll be there on Saturday if you want to come meet with me. And the other one says, call me later that afternoon. So after we hung up the phone, she's like, what's my next step? And I said, well, this is what it looks like. We are going to, we're going to partner on it. I said, we're going to do three deals together. It's going to be an... Uh, and I do, we do, you do. And the way that it works is the first one, I'm doing everything. You're watching over my shoulder. You're seeing how I do and you're asking questions. The second one, we're going to be doing it together. I'm going to make sure that you understand the process. The third one, it's all on you, but I'm right behind you over your shoulder, kind of holding your hand and guiding you so that when you do your fourth one, you're on your own. You can do it. You can feel confident that you know what you're doing. And so the split is this. For the first deal, because I'm doing everything and I'm training you and I'm not asking you to pay any money up front, I want 75% of whatever, whatever profit there is. So whatever we collect, whatever there is, I want 75% of it and I'll give you 25%. The second one is going to be 50-50. And again, the second one's going to be 50-50 as well. I said, I think that's, that's a fair compensation for my time and my effort that we're, that we're doing this. Her response, and now mind you, this is after I showed her exactly how to find the deals, where I'm looking, how to do it, how to contact and talk to certain, certain sellers. So this is about, about two and a half weeks of, of you know, pretty intense work. We've probably spent maybe, I want to say maybe about four hours, possibly five hours together as far as it. And so her comment to me was like, oh, okay, all right, 75%, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to do this on my own. I think I'm going to go at it myself. I think I got it right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck you. What the hell? 5 hours of my time. 5 damn hours of my time. And so, yeah, the scarcity comes inside. Yeah, I get, yeah, I get I get pissed off and I'm thinking to myself, "What the hell?" And 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 yeah, I know I'm ranting here, but the reality of it is is I want to help people, but at the same time, I don't want to help people if they're going to be like that. And so I'm struggling. And this is this is you know this this is what happens when you grow your business, when you're when you're bootstrapping yourself and you're deciding, hey, I am getting to a point now where I'm in my business. I need to duplicate my efforts. Do I hire an employee? Do I bring someone on as a mentorship and we partner? You know what do I do? And then the whole scarcity comes in, like, oh, this person's going to cut you out. He's going to take take your ideas, take your leads, take your people. And it's like you know what. I got to get away from all of that. And that's the scarcity that, that, that currently is, is, you know, plaguing me right now in my business is, do I just look at who I'm going to help and just choose very, very specifics? Do I charge them money up front to really weed out the people that are going? Um, or do I just continue doing what I'm doing, banging my head against the wall and just hating on people because they are using their own God-given talent and agency to just say, you know what, you know, their God-given gift of freedom, freedom of choice to say, yeah, I can screw somebody out of, uh, you know, helping me. Or maybe it's just karma. Maybe I've done this to other people and it's just coming back because this is, this is, uh, you know, um, some form of, some form of karma. I don't really know the answer, but it's the scarcity and it's what happens. And so in your own business, you'll face this. You'll face these challenges. They might not be specific to this as far as like, oh, do I help this person and are they going to go, you know, or do I want to just go ahead and shut down my business? It might be, you know, do I give enough profit on the, do I leave enough profit on the table so that I'm, when I'm wholesale, this is going to be, you know, it's going to benefit someone else and you're going to have a better relationship or do I keep it all to myself? And so, I mean, scarcity shows itself in many different forms and many different ways throughout this business. Um, you know, in real estate where there's a lot of money to be made, either short term or long term, Scarcity is going to going to rule its ugly head. Right now in the industry, there's this huge, huge um, conversation around wholesale fees, 
Right now it's a seller's market and you have wholesalers out there saying, hey man, it's okay. If I'm making a $100,000 wholesale fee, what is it to you? You're still making your profit of you know 15% or whatever it is as, as, a, uh, as an investor. Now, um, I, I currently, I do, I do not subscribe to that model. I don't believe that, that's a, uh, that that is a, um, a sustainable model because as the market flips and you're a wholesaler that's greedy like that, I can tell you what, that when you're, when you're gonna be begging for, for buyers to, uh, to take your deals, they're gonna tell you to hit the curb. They're gonna tell you to hit the streets to get lost because you're greedy. And yeah, you know, in the short run, you're gonna make some money. But for example, if it's a $200,000 ARV and you got it under contract for let's say, um, you know, sixty thousand dollars, and you're turning around and you're selling it for hundred and twenty, and it needs about forty thousand dollars worth of work in it. Um, dude, man, when is enough enough? Where can you make this, this, you know, make it profitable for both of you guys, especially for the guy that's taking on all the risk? Um, and I see this not just uh, there. There are many wholesalers in and around my local market that I know personally that are doing this. Some of them are double closing it, which you know n the buyer never finds out anyway. Um, and then uh, some of them are just straight up doing assignment fees. And I mean, these are like huge ass assignment fees. And one of them had a, had a $90,000 assignment fee. Totally blew my mind. Um, and he's bragging all over town about it. Like, yeah, man, I made $90,000, held it for 48 hours, did this, this, and that. Um, so anyway, again, it's, it's all about where, one, your mindset is at. Right now, my mindset is kind of, I'm on the fence again. I'm on the fence of, do I still want to continue helping people or do I just want to just hunker down and just do my business and shut down the local the local mentoring, because I'll, I'll do this stuff. I got guys in other states that I'm helping that we're making money and we're doing this together and I'll do that all day long because it doesn't affect me locally. But when I'm out there knocking on doors and, and I'm bumping into people that I've been training this because I need to knock on doors because they're not bringing me business anymore because they're all trying to do it on their own. Um, yeah, that's a whole different story. So anyway, Ryan Nickel coming at you. This is just the mindset, you know, uh, topic as far as you know being a bootstrap investor just what happens man got to clear my head got to get clear about this issue and i got to move forward with what's gonna be best for me for my business and my family all right i'm coming at you see you later oh wait one other thing too i truly believe this i honestly but this is why i help people this is why I, I i do what i do because when i came i came from a point of complete 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 um lack i was at a point where i was I was sleeping on the back of some guy's floor, trying to learn this business when my family was struggling and they were on food stamps. Absolutely just, you know, I needed to do this and I got a deal. And in, and in three weeks of, of having a mentor take me under his wing, I made $20,000. Personally, personal income to me, I made $20,000. I take it back, I paid him, um, I ended up paying him some money on it, of course, because you know, hey, it's only fair, but I did all of the work and, and this and so for me it was it was it was it was beautiful man and and that's why I do what I do because I know where I came from and uh, you're right dude you're right Bobby and she already has <laughs> she already comes like hey I talked to this person what do I do in this situation I'm like I don't know you're gonna have to figure it out um, if we partnered on it I'd gladly help you but uh, it doesn't look like we're gonna be partnering on it okay fine all right I'm just trying to work this through you know I just want to learn this business and if you don't want to help that's fine I'm like yeah I don't. If I'm not going to be paid for it, I'll, if you want to pay me, I'll help you. If you want to partner with me, I'll help you. If you want me to give you my time freely, I'm not going to help you. So yeah, man, I didn't even have to give it a week. I gave it less than 15 minutes and she was calling me back. <laughs> but still, it wasn't because she wanted, she wanted to do any, any, any partnership on it. But man, um, yeah, I'm not trying to burn bridges. And um, I don't think she's intentionally trying to either. I just think she's come from a point I just I I maybe it's her, maybe it's her own scarcity and lack and stuff like that cuz I mean I totally get it I mean she has a job though so I don't know um I I totally get though this is for me like man I, I was on food stamps and now I look and I'm like shoot you know what really realistically you're just one deal away from changing your financial future forever it was that one deal that changed my life that $20,000 check told me that was my shut up check. I learned this from my mentor. He's like, yeah, you need a good shut up check. And uh, what that shut up check was is like, I got $20,000. I can tell all my fears, all my anxiety, all of, the, all of the voices in my head just to shut up. 
And uh, another thing it does is I can go to my friends and my family. My, you know, my, my in-laws are like, why don't you tell her husband to get a good job? Tell him to get a life and stop you know, treating his family like crap and get off food stamps. I can go like, you know what? Shut up, bitch. Look at this. $20,000. And um, I didn't quite call her that, but that's what that check was for. was to shut everyone else up. Like, look, I'm making this. I'm doing it. And honestly, that's what I want to do. I want to help people. I want to get them to that point where they can tell it. They can have their own shut-up checks. And they can just go around and say, yeah, you know what? I did this. I'm a self-made man. And uh, so, you know, I, I kind of got the bleeding heart thing. I want to go help people. And at the same time, I'm like, you screw me. Uh, you know, I, you want to take advantage of me? So be it. But anyway, hey, Bobby, you have a great day, man. Go out there and crush it. And just remember, you're one deal away from just changing your entire financial future, man. And... Uh, I love it that you pop on here all the time. All right, take care.